If I only had more time. It's a phrase that we probably all said at some point in our lives. As a student, maybe studying for an exam or a test. Maybe we're stuck in traffic on our way to an interview. Right? Or frantically getting a house ready and food ready for a company that's coming over for a holiday. Or maybe you said it in a more serious moment. As you're your kids step into adulthood. If only I had more time. As you just heard, a life-changing medical diagnosis. If I only had more time. What do we want with more time? What do we do with our time? Is it for us? Is it for others? Is it for God-honoring, God-glorifying purposes? In this passage that we just heard from Ruth, we see a man who's out of time. He's at the end of his life. And there's no coming back from where he is. The grains of sand in the hourglass of his life are nearly gone. He's hanging on a cross right next to Jesus. All out of time. And we see an exchange between the two thieves that are being crucified with Christ. One wants Jesus to save himself and the thieves. And the other thief corrects the selfish one, saying that they are suffering the same punishment as the one that everybody calls God. They are guilty. Jesus is not. And then the thief gives a pleading prayer of mercy to the one and only Christ. He says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. A criminal doomed to die turns meekly with a true and honest, sincere heart to Jesus and requests to be remembered by him. This man has nothing. Being a thief, he basically is nothing. Nothing to give, nothing to offer. No opportunity to display great gifts or great skills. No chance to live a life as a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Unable to fulfill the great commission with the other followers of Christ. This man didn't even have an opportunity to partake in communion. He didn't have time to be baptized. He didn't have time to repeat a sinner's prayer. He never served in a ministry. He never traveled on a short-term mission trip. He never gave money to the church. But look at what he did with the time that he had. He knew he deserved the punishment that he was receiving. He knew he was going to die. He knew Jesus was God. He truly believed. And with the few moments of time that he had left, the few precious breaths in his lungs, He asked Jesus to save him, to remember him, because he believed Jesus would, and he believed Jesus could. These are the words that Jesus says to an unnamed and mostly unknown man. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So that man had no hope but divine grace, and Jesus had power over that grace. And it's ironic to think about it, but... How how fortunate was it for this criminal that he was on a cross next to Jesus? His execution could have been scheduled for a different day or a different time, but it wasn't. It was scheduled for this particular Friday afternoon. And because of that, he was able to receive the gift of eternal life. And now, not only is his story echoing throughout all of history and eternity, but his story is our story. Because we are sinners deserving of death. If we confess with our lips and we believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, then then we'll be saved. Because our story is his story, but it's with a major twist because we have time. Most of us have a lot of time. If I have the ability to see the different categories of time that I've used and wasted in my life, I would be appalled, as would many of us. We have time. 
Time to do what this man and many others could not do. Almost more time than we know what to do with. And so the question is, what are you going to do with the time that you have? Are you going to use your time for yourself? Are you going to use your time for others? Are you, use your, are you going to use your time for God, honoring God, glorifying purposes? Are you going to use your time, every breath that you have, to surrender to the one and only living God? So what are you going to do with the time that you have?